In this section, we want to talk about constructing estimates for population proportions. So keep in mind, what we're going to be doing is looking at some sample data that was collected, which we can use to calculate a value p hat, our sample proportion. And we're going to use that to make some inference about p, which represents our population proportion. So we'll talk about what a confidence interval is, how we construct them, and then how we provide some interpretations. So anytime we collect sample data, we can generate a point estimate. When we're talking about proportions, our point estimate is that value p hat, our sample proportion. If we add and subtract some margin of error from that point estimate, we generate a confidence interval. So starting with some value p hat, our sample statistic, we're going to add and subtract a margin of error. So we can represent that as that sample statistic plus or minus that margin of error, or we can turn that into an interval or range of values. So our lowest bound is going to be our sample statistic minus that margin of error. And the upper bound for our interval will be that p hat, our sample statistic, plus that margin of error. So dead center in the middle of this interval, then, is p hat itself, since we're adding and subtracting that same value on either side. So it's our hope that that confidence interval will contain the actual population parameter that we're trying to estimate. But keep in mind, it's something that we'll never know for sure. We're trying to make estimates, best possible guesses, but in the end, we'll never have a definitive answer whether or not we came up with the correct solution or not, or the correct conclusion. So in our first example, a poll was conducted that asked 1,000 people, people to answer the following question. Do you approve or disapprove of the way Barack Obama is handling his job as president? And these results were obtained. So the first thing we want to do is identify the point estimate for the proportion of people who approve. So point estimate changes depending on what we're dealing with. If we're talking about averages, if we're talking about variation. In this case, we're talking about proportions. So our point estimate, our sample proportion in this case, is going to be the 0.43 people who approve of the job he's doing. Now let's assume we have a margin of error of 0.03, so 3%, we want to find the 95% confidence interval estimate for the proportion of people who approve. So to get that, we'll take 0.43, which is that sample proportion, and we'll add and subtract 0.03. So some sources will list a confidence interval like this. This is pretty common for journals and newspapers. Well, actually, maybe just more common for newspapers. So they'll represent that as the sample proportion is 43% plus or minus 3%. And then other sources, more uh, journals or more scientific articles, will typically represent this as an interval. So we would take 0 0.43 minus 0 0.03. So we would get 0 0.4. And then we would take 0 0.43 plus 0 0.03 to get 0 0.46. So that's how we generate that range of values assuming we know the point estimate and the margin of error. So in this example, we constructed the 95% confidence interval estimate. But we want to keep in mind that that confidence level of 95% tells us about the, su the success rate of the method that we're using. And we want to be very clear, not about the probability that our interval is correct. So there is a true population proportion if we could go out and survey every single person in the entire United States. And we could ask them, do you approve, do you disapprove? And then we could get the true population proportion. That's going to be unfeasible due to time and money constraints. So we know that there is some true value. And we're hoping that this interval that we constructed contains that. But when we talk about that 95% confidence level, 
that's again going back to this idea that if we were able to go out and survey a thousand people, repeat that experiment, survey a thousand people again, go out, repeat that experiment, and do that over and over again, sometimes we would end up with intervals that contains that true value, and other times we would end up with intervals that fail to capture that actual result. So again, in the end, we never know. All we know is that this method, 95% of the time, meaning if we repeat this experiment over and over again, 95% of the time, we'll get an interval that contains that value that we're after. We have no way of knowing if this particular interval does capture that value we're after. We just have to say with some certain amount of confidence that we think that it does, and we'll end up basing our conclusions off that. 